Hi, my name is Sean Heron, and I started off Blue Tech Week by watching the keynote speech given by Paula Buntempi, Dean of the Graduate School of Oceanography at University of Rhode Island, which was given on Tuesday morning. Her presentation was a really great way to start off Blue Tech Week, as she gave a lot of entry-level information about what was spoken about for the rest of the day and really throughout the entire week. She began by introducing herself and then briefly giving an overview of some of the various types of ocean-related data collected by satellites, including some really impressive measurements, such as their ability to detect which type of phytoplankton are dominant in different regions of the ocean, which I had no idea that satellites were able to detect. Um, the bottom left image here on this slide is actually that phytoplankton uh, satellite data. The red regions, for instance, show areas that are dominated by diatoms. Um, so yeah, I found that really interesting that satellites are able to detect something that I would have thought would need some sort of actual physical probe in the field to detect. Uh, all these other images are different types of satellite data, and then the top right image is um, some modeling done, including some satellite data. Um, one of the many parts of her presentation that I found really valuable was her expl explanation of the blue economy because it wasn't a concept I was super familiar with. As you can see from this slide, um, which was given in her presentation, the blue economy is a complex and dynamic system that involves a number of different sectors, including fisheries, tourism, climate change, renewable energy, waste management, and maritime transport. This was really helpful to my understanding of this concept. Initially, my assumption was that the blue economy would strictly be concerned with traditional economic industries like fishing and shipping, but this explanation given during, given during her presentation really helped to get the concept through that while economically valuable industries do play a major role in the blue economy, things like waste management do as well because they can significantly impact the value of the ocean and therefore the revenue that nations are able to gain from its resources. She also presented this slide showing that the worldwide blue economy is about $2.5 trillion annually and that the U.S. blue economy alone supports 2.3 million jobs and contributed $373 billion to the nation's GDP in 2018. She then went into a lot of detail about this extremely interesting and thorough monitoring program she's involved with in Rhode Island. This is the longest ongoing time series in the ocean throughout the entire world. The seafood industry is critical to the region, so since 1959, there's been a well-recorded weekly sampling of fish populations in the Narragansett Bay. One of the many things they found is that warming water has pushed out commercially viable cold water species, such as the winter flounder. This presentation really stood out to me due to how incredibly thorough the observation system is. This slide shows an animated rendering of their monitoring equipment which includes a brick-and-mortar shore lab, as well as vessels on the water and autonomous monitoring equipment fastened to the seafloor. Another really interesting presentation I watched was Nick Lambert's portion of the Satellite Applications Catapult session. Nick Lambert is the co-founder and director of NLA International, which is based out of the UK. Mr. Lambert describes NLA International as a blue economy solutions company. They're focused on incorporating a lot of different types of data from satellite data to historical records in order to facilitate the most efficient and sustainable use of the ocean's resources all over the globe. They see the huge wastes caused by inefficient or unsustainable systems and aim to show government or land management agencies how new technologies or methods can be used to increase efficiency and therefore GDP. This presentation really stood out to me because their approach to tackling marine-related climate change issues is extremely well-rounded rather than being hyper-focused on one subject without taking a step back to look at how that interacts with everything else going on. He goes on to say that he believes our biggest challenge toward achieving a higher percentage of nations using the ocean sustainably isn't actually the level of technology at this point, but rather the lack of acceptance of new technologies and methods. This was an idea that I heard from multiple people speaking during the Tuesday sessions of the Blue Tech Week. We saw so many examples of incredible innovations in new technologies that are capable of doing unbelievable things, but if big management organizations or agencies aren't willing to adopt those new technologies, then their benefit will never be realized. Making sure that new technologies and discoveries see their full potential rather than being ignored by decision makers is, I believe, one of the major challenges environmentalists are going to face in the immediate future. This whole idea was definitely one of the biggest takeaways I got from attending Blue Tech Week. 
Thank you to the IRA committee and to ESRM 462 for allowing us the opportunity to attend this great conference.